Please be seated. Of the 45th Space Wing and our commander, Brigadier General, Brigadier General Select Starbuck, we'd like to welcome you to a very special occasion this morning. We'd like to extend a very special and warm welcome to the Sands family who is here and has traveled from far and near, and our very distinguished visitors for honoring a pioneer in ballistic missile flight and the Air Force Space Museum history itself. Many of you know that I am a missile launch officer, so I take great ply, pride and privilege in being here this morning to dedicate this particular uh, exhibit. Now, also, many of you know that as a child, when I uh, was a very young child, I used to sit back and watch a lot of rocket launches from here to Cape, and I used to dream and have visions of working out here one day. Well, I'd like for you all to dream and imagine a little today that you're out at the Space Museum because unfortunately we're not able to be there because of the loading of the Delta vehicle today. But nevertheless, I think that, uh, that everyone would understand the importance and significance of that and that General Sands himself would understand the significance and importance of carrying on the mission here at the 45th Space Wing. So without further ado, I'd like to continue the program by having you all rise and prepare for the singing of the National Anthem by Mass Sergeant Avery. <coughs> Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight while the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wait for the land of the free and the home of the Please pray with me. God of the universe, we are grateful today for the pioneering spirit, the love of missiles, space, and the United States Air Force, which you placed in the heart of Major General Harry Sands. His contributions to our understanding of rocketry and exploration have helped to bring us to this current, to our current level of capacity. We remember Major General Sands today for his deep commitment and his shaping of our important history. As we dedicate this display of remembrance, we ask your blessing upon Leela, his wife, and upon his sons and their families. May their hearts be warmed and encouraged by this honor bestowed. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, take your seats. At this time, I would like to introduce the head of the Air Force Base and Miss Missile Foundation, Lieutenant General Henry. Mrs. Sands, members of the Sands family, friends of General Sands, Colonel Starbuck, ladies and gentlemen, we are grateful that we're able to be here on this very special occasion. We are honoring a gentleman who was a true pioneer. He was a pioneer's pioneer of the missile and space age. In my last conversation with General Bud Sands, he told me about the time in Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in 1946 or 47, when he was called into General Craigie's office. General Craigie is another pioneer, and said, Bud, the Germans have been, may have latched onto something with their B-1s and their B-2s and we need to understand the implications of what they accomplished. 
let's set up an office and do it. The end product of that conversation was that General Sands activated the first ever office for guided missiles in the United States Air Force. There are two parts to this space and missile business. One part is the research and development or acquisition, and the other part is the test and operations part. I call this last part is the part where the rubber meets the road. General Sands gravitated to where the rubber meets the road. He understood that the most important part of any program is its eventual utility to the soldier, sailor, or airman. He was a true pioneer in the development and operational testing of the early guided missiles. Those were the days of the snark-infested waters and the no-go Navajo. <laughs> we learned from each test, and that legacy enables the high reliabilities that we are now achieving. After he completed his Air Force career, Bud turned his energy toward the preservation of the legacy he created. He was a leader in gaining Air Force approval for the Space and Missile Museum. He foresaw the need for financial support and provided the leadership to establish the Missile and Museum Foundation. And he gathered together a core of dedicated volunteers who have made the museum what it is today. It is unfortunate that the pace of ongoing Delta things will not let us hold this ceremony at the museum because this is where we should be. Everything that we have out there reflects his legacy. The Space and Missile Museum Foundation is proud to be able to develop and build this memorial exhibit, an exhibit which honors his career in the Air Force and his contribution to its heritage. It is a unique exhibit, conceptually designed by three men who were very close to Bud. I would like to recognize Hank Henry, Dick Jones, and Dave Parrish for their outstanding assistance in developing the concept of this exhibit and assuring its excellence in manufacture. On behalf of all of us, thank you, gentlemen. It is now my honor, my privilege, and my pleasure to present to you, Colonel Starbuck, this letter which prefers the General Sands Memorial Exhibit as a gift from the Foundation to the United States Air Force. Thank you very much. Well, if you don't know why you're here and you're not out at the museum, I'll tell you why you're here. They're out there mixing, and, and you need to take this down because I'm sure you'll be quizzed on it this afternoon, but they're mixing nitrogen tetroxide with aerosene 50, and I'm sure you want to know what is aerosene 50. Well, that's a 50-50 mix of monomethyl hydrazine and unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine. So if someone says, why did you go to building e &L instead of the museum, it's because they were mixing all of those big words together. And uh, basically what that is, that's two things that when you mix them together, they make a huge flame and burn it over 2,000 degrees. It's very, very dangerous stuff. But I think uh, General Sands w would understand uh, why we're here and not out there. But the important thing is that this display will be out there for thousands of visitors uh, to see. Um, and there are many who love America's space program, and we're, we're, we're here to honor uh, General Sands. Uh, it's uh, especially nice to see the family here as we honor uh, this visionary, General Sands. Uh, earlier I was asking Mrs. Sands uh, where she met General Sands, and she was the first lieutenant in the United States Army, a nurse, World War II in the South Pacific, and she meets a pilot from the 403rd uh, Troop Carrier Wing. Uh, they get married and uh, they're married for over 50 years. So we salute you for your 50 years of marriage. <laughs> we salute you for your service to the nation as a uh, nurse in the United States Army, which uh, happened at that time to be uh, the United States Air Force. As you all know, it didn't come about until 1947, so uh, uh, we appreciate your service too. Um, one of the reasons that we have uh, the museum is uh, to help us remember things like rockets and complexes and hardware. Uh, but more importantly, we want to remember the legacy, the legacy of people uh, like General Sands. Uh, we're, we're honored um, that uh, sons Harry, Patrick, and uh, Ray are here with us. 
Um, there was another son who served his country and served well and, uh, and died while serving his country as a pilot in the United States Air Force. Uh, so uh, we honor his memory as, as well, uh, Leila. Uh, but also, uh, we had the museum to remember people, people like General Sands. Um, he was the vice commander and the commander here at uh, Patrick and Cape Canaveral for what is now the 45th Space Wing. It had another name at the time, but that was during the period of 1963 to 64. The sons you see uh, on the front row here attended Satellite High School when Satellite High School was first built. But let's go back to that period, 61 to 64, just that small period when General Sands was the commander here. Let me run through a few dates that you might recall. 20th of February, 1962, America's first manned orbital flight, Friendship 7, was launched off of Complex 14. The 24th of May that same year, America's second manned orbital flight, Aurora 7, was launched on Complex 14 with uh, M. Scott Carpenter. In October of the same year, Sigma 7 launched from Complex 14 with Walter M. Shira. In May of 63, the following year, the Faith 7 was launched with astronaut L. Gordon Cooper where he completed 34 hours and 22 orbits in space uh, before uh, a landing. That was the last Mercury flight. All of those Mercury flights occurred uh, during General Sands' tenure as, uh, as the commander. Uh, following that, he went on to a tour at the Ballistic Systems Division in Los Angeles. And while there, under his leadership, the United States developed several of the ballistic weapon systems whose technology has evolved into the space and missile systems we currently use. Anytime a Delta, a Atlas, or a Titan rocket is launched, it has General Sand's fingerprints on it. He was a brilliant man, driven, demanding. But those were tough times. It was the height of the Cold War and the beginning of the space race. There were times that demanded cutting edge leadership, and General Sands was the right man for the job. He was one of those special leaders who could inspire people to achieve more than they believed they could accomplish. We had a lot of failures at those times and a lot of disappointments, but due to the leadership, the guidance, the counsel, the instruction of General Sands, um, we came out on top. We won that space race and we won that Cold War. His teams produced results. Those results helped us bring us where we are today. Programs such as Atlas, Thor, Titan, and Minuteman tested and launched under his watch flourished. We as a nation Oh, your, your father and your husband, a debt of gratitude. Any time a rocket is launched from the Cape or from Vandenberg, we can rest assured that General Sands is up there smiling, saying we paved the way and we did it for peace. And when we launched that Delta rocket on Sunday night, I can assure you that his memory is preserved every time we do that. To the Sands family, your father, and husband was a great American who left a proud legacy of technological developments. I can only hope that those of us who are carrying on the reins of responsibility he passed down can maintain his legacy and live up to his standards. The Air Force Space and Missile Museum is a monument to his contributions and devotion to our space and missile heritage. He was the driving force in the effort to establish that museum and the foundation which works to promote and support the facilities and artifacts, which by the way, are enjoyed by thousands and thousands of visitors annually. With the dedication of this exhibit, those visitors will get to know firsthand about one of my personal heroes, Major General Harry Sands, as well uh, as more about the foundation that keeps the museum going. Our museum is a showcase heralding American history, like no other. We can thank General Sands and the volunteers, uh, members, supporters, and gift givers of the, to the foundation for all of that. They're true patriots. I wish to thank the Sands family, particularly you, Mrs. Sands, for the sacrifices you made to support your husband's military career and his initiatives with the Museum Foundation. It's said that behind every great man, there's a great woman. Mrs. Sands, that great woman is you. His accomplishments are your accomplishments, and for that, we are thankful.
how to respond to all that <laughs> more, than, more than I expect. Thank you so much. On behalf of my three sons, Harry, Pat, and Ray, and myself, I want to thank the 45th Space Wing, the Museum Foundation, and the volunteers, all who worked so hard to provide this fitting memorial to my husband, the late Harry J. Bud Sands. The Air Force was Bud's life and his love. He treasured every minute of his Air Force career, and particularly, I think, the time he spent at Patrick Air Force Base as commander of the Air Force Missile Test Center. One of his great passions, of course, was the museum. <coughs> he was instrumental in the formation of the museum in the early 60s because he felt it was so important to capture the history of those early days of missile and space development here at Cape Canaveral. Even after he retired from active military service, he still remained deeply involved in this museum. He persevered until the Museum Foundation was formed, then pursued establishing it with the state of Florida and the federal government as a legitimate tax-free institution. Even after Bud became so ill, and just before his death, he would constantly pursue avenues to support and publicize the museum and foundation. His frequent telephone calls to and meetings with U.S. congressmen, senators, astronauts, and Air Force officials was a clear demonstration of how he felt about this museum. And I'm sure Bud is looking down on us today with a great deal of pride and appreciation. Again, thank you for memorializing my husband in such a beautiful manner. My family and I are extremely grateful for your thoughtfulness and your kindness. May God bless each one of you. Also have refreshments in the rear, and that will bring to a close this very fine presentation on a very special day. Thank you for joining us.
I good. I'm good. I'm good. I was here. I came here in '63, so we had a little bit of Skylab when I first retired. First job, yeah. Our first space station. Yeah, it really is. Unfortunate the second set of